Hello everyone, welcome to Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More. Um, it's February, week two, and the prompt for this month is Recycle, Repurpose and Reuse. And just um, to for, for those of you that um, haven't visited me before, I have a Facebook group called Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More, where I give monthly prompts and we create weekly artwork based on that particular month's prompt. So we're into week two of February and I'm going to do a journal page today. Um, I am trying to use um, all of this month's stuff that I've already got in my stash, backgrounds that I've already created and, and discarded for whatever reason, and painted papers and, and that kind of thing sort of, you know, that I've already got in my stash. Um, there's backgrounds that I've created myself, there's various pieces of happy mail as well, so I've pulled some of this out that I may or may not use. These are coffee filters that were sent to me by, by fear. Um, so, I'm going to use this black piece of mixed media paper, in fact it's cardstock actually, for the background to my page today. This was created using Distress Oxide um, inks. I've done two backgrounds like this before for projects. I first used this for the background of my Inches page and I also did a similar background for my Halloween page and I think that's where this one has come from. I think I originally did this one for my Halloween page and decided that um, I wanted to introduce purple so this one is is left over and as I say it's just distress inks with various stamped images on top of it and I've just um, done this on quite heavy heavy cardstock smooth cardstock because I find that distress oxide inks for me work better on cardstock than they do on mixed media paper but as I say this has just got various stamped images on it it's um, got this lovely floral design in the background, some of the dilutions, um, background dots, um, some script in black and white and then I've got some white splatter on there as well. So that's going to form my background. And then I've got this page here. Now this is done on watercolour paper and it looks as though um, this is Artist Loft watercolours. I don't think it's spray ink, it looks as if it's um, if it's watercolour. So I've obviously um, done this at some stage and you know decided it wasn't quite what I had in in mind but I've, I've kept it and all I've done is I've drawn a circle on this background I don't know whether you can pick up that gorgeous gorgeous shimmer but I want to try and create a moon and I've drawn a circle just um, with the, the the mug the giant mug that I use to keep all of my large paint brushes in so I am just going to cut um, around the outside of this moon shape and then I'll be back I've cut out my moon um, and I want to cut it into sort of like a crescent shape so I've grabbed a smaller circle this is just my tub of gesso. Um, let me just move my background out of the way so that I don't get any pencil marks on that and I think what I want to do is just, let me just make sure I've got that in the right place, is just draw around my tub of gesso like that and then I'm just going to cut this piece out as well. well that's what um, I've got now. Now I've got this idea that I'd quite like to have two little quirky birds sitting side by side on my moon. So I drew a body shape on this piece of card and you can see that I've trimmed around it. I cut it out um, and it was just too big and too fat and so I've just trimmed it down until I've ended up with a shape that I am happy with. And I think that I want to have two birds sitting side by side. So I am going to draw around um, this in the same way that um, I did with the with the other one and then I shall cut it out and we'll just have a have a look it's shapes and sizing that I'm trying to sort out at, at this stage so I'll cut that out and then we'll place them side by side and see how that I've looks. got my two birds and I just feel that they're just a little bit too big for my moon so I'm just going to take one of the birds and I'm just going to trim it down slightly and I'm going to do one um, at a time so that I can use the other one there we go as um, a template for the for the other because I want them to be symmetrical so I'm just going to cut around this like like so and it's just a case of fiddling until you are happy with your shape now that's pretty good actually so I'm going to use this one here 
as a template and I'm going to cut around the other one so that they're both the okay, same. So I've cut my bird shapes out um, and fiddled around with them and I'm happy with the way that that looks now but I can't decide what I want to do to cover them. I really like the metallic and glimmer of, of these two here and I've got the pink and the blue. I also love the texture um, in these ones here as well and I like the fact that I've got the purpley grey black and the, the pink so I could have two birds there but I just love this one too this one's calling to me and I could cut some of the blue out and some of the pink um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some more shapes from um, the scrap pieces left over that's the piece left over from where I cut out the moon and I've got another piece here um, and I am going to cover them in some of this and and we shall we shall see um, just so that I can try them out and see which one I like best and whatever I don't use I can use for ATCs and recycle them right, again. I've cut some extra templates out and so what I can do is I can glue these on the back and just cut round them because these pieces of paper here are really thin. I can do the same there. This one here on watercolour paper is much, much thicker. So what I am going to do, let me just um, grab my, my templates and just move that out of the way. Where I originally cut out the shapes of the birds, let me just get this the right way up. I can um, put this on and decide where I want to cut around um, and see which areas I, I like the best. So for instance, I've got a lovely pink area there because I want one pink one and one blue one. I love that actually, that's really nice and, and bright. And I just love this area down here too. Those work quite nicely together, don't they? What about over here where we've got the blue? I really like that blue as well. And so I'm just going to play around with them um, with this. I like that. I like this darker area here. And I'm going to cut two bird shapes out there and then we'll see which ones look best. I can see that um, I just drew around my shapes here and I've cut them out. So I've got those two. So I'm going to put those to um, one side. And then this one here, all I'm going to do is apply some glue stick. Let's do the other side. Oh, whoops a daisy, come back like that I'm just using a piece of um, deli paper and then I'm just going to glue my piece of paper right on I want this area here I think so I'm going to turn it over and glue that down like like that and then I can cut um, around that and I'll do exactly the same with these pieces here so that's how I'm I'm doing it okay, so my birds are all cut out let's have a play um, let's see which ones work best I don't think these ones are going to work I can see that already I don't know it just doesn't work against the background I love them and I'll definitely use them in another project but I just don't think they're right for, for this personally I like those um, because I think they go really well with um, the background so you've got the texture from the embossing folder, I presume Know It has used. I'm sure these were from, from Know It, but um, it looks like um, they've been put through an embossing folder. So I really like that. It just goes really well with the background. And I really like these too. Um, oh gosh. And I like these because the shimmer goes really well with the shimmer that I've got going on within the moon. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photograph of all of these and I'm going to look at it as you can see it through my camera. Um, and then I'll make my decision. I've had a look through the lens and I've made my decision. It's going to be these ones from Know It. So what I want to do now is just grab some um, ink. Archival ink will do. Let me just grab a sponge. And I just want to ink around the edge of the, the moon. Um, so I shall do this as I always do. And it will add a bit of shadow to my, to my moon. And I'm going to do the same um, with the with the birds as well. And then we can start gluing things down and deciding what else we want to do with the with the background. So I've inked around my moon and I'm happy with that. And before I glue it down, I've decided that I want to add some um, detail to it. Um, and I want to add some hearts. And I said that I was not going to use any commercial stamps and, and stencils this month or try not to. So I've got some hearts here. 
um, that I made a while ago. I don't know whether you can um, see them. These were made from, from die cuts, and I've attached the die cuts to an old um, credit card. It was probably a hotel room card. I don't really use credit cards as, as such. And I've just attached it to my stamp block using one of these removable um, glue um, things. So I want to add some embossing powder. And I've got some purple here, so let me just grab, in fact, let me just fold this in half again. I'm using a piece of scratch paper, going with the recycling theme. <laughs> so, I've got my embossing pad here, let's just pop that there. And I just want to add some of these hearts. So I want some large ones and some small ones. Let's add the large ones first. There we go. And I've got this purple um, glitter embossing powder. Um, and I'm trying to not introduce too many colours. So I've chosen this purple um, just because it goes really well. Oh, I've missed a bit there. It goes really well with the colours in the bird. Uh, yep, yeah, the bird that I've, I've chosen. So I'm just going to remove all the excess using a small um, paintbrush if I can find one. Here we go, this one will do, do here. I should have used my embossing buddy um, and I forgot, which is uh, filled with cornstarch and stops all the, all the static. But it's fine if I get a few, oh dear, a few bits of glitter, then it doesn't matter. See, I always make a mess, don't I, with um, with embossing powder. So I am going to heat set this with my heat gun and then we'll add some small I ones. just touched in that area that I missed with my Versamarca pen. Um, and I think what I want to do now is just to add a couple more of the larger hearts just on the edge of the moon. And we'll have one down here as well. There we go, just before I add some of the, the smaller ones, just so that it looks a little bit more random. There we go. And then where did I add that other one? There we are. And I'm just going to brush off the um, excess powder. There we are. And then heat set um, that. And then I'll add some smaller hearts as well. Let's add some um, smaller ones as well. Not too many. have one down here there we go and then we'll add some more of the embossing powder and see how that looks if I can remember where I put them did I have one over there as well I can't remember I feel as if I want one up here too let me just add one whilst I've got the powder out there we go And again, I'm just going to brush off any extra and just heat set this with my um, heat tool. I've also got some black embossing powder and I'm going to stamp four more hearts. One, two, three, four, there we go. And I am going to add some black embossing powder now and you'll see what I want these for in a second. There we go, so I'm going to heat set those. Pour this back in first. I don't want to waste any. There we are. Pop that to one side, put the lid back on my embossing pad because I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to heat set these dry I'm going to fussy cut them out I'll do this off camera though because um, this is going to be a little bit fiddly so I shall cut them into individual portions and grab a smaller pair of scissors and cut these out I've cut my hearts out and I'm just going to go around the edges because you can see um, that I've just got some white and so I'm just going to go around the edges with a with a sharpie marker just to fill in any of the the white bits. And then these hearts are going to form the feet of my bird. So I'm just going to add a tiny dab of glue 
there we go, to the ends. This is the Dovecraft glue and it glues really, really quickly. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of that to the end. There we go. And I'm just going to position those in place and then pop my bird on. Hang on, that's, I think that's about right. Oh, and then just quickly, there we go. And then hold that in place until that's glued glued down. There we are. There we go, that's stuck. So I'm just going to set that to one side now, just upside down so that it doesn't stick to my surface. And I'm going to do exactly the same as my other bird. Here we go. So we'll add some glue again to the tip. And then I'm just going a bit more on that one there. This is really good glue. And then I'm just going to pop those in place. Maybe a bit closer together. Oh, hang on. Let me just grab a pokey tool. It might make it um, a little bit easier. it wipe the excess glue off there we are and I'm just going to leave that to dry I've got some googly eyes for my birds and I'm going to glue those down with the the same glue what have I done with it I put it back in my drawer so I'll use the same dovecraft um, glue and I want to make some beaks as well so I've got a piece of black cardstock and what I am going to do is just cut some triangles like this and then I'm going to cut one there, that might be a bit long, we'll see. Another one there like that. And when I open these up, I might need to adjust these slightly. I've got two beaks, they're a bit too pointed so I'm going to fiddle around with, with these and then I'm going to glue them so down. Can see, I've glued the um, beak and the eyes down onto my birds and I want to glue my moon down, something like that. So again, I'm just going to use this Dovecraft glue, apply some, oops, a daisy, in fact, let's do it with my finger so that I can smooth it right to the edge. And I like this, as I say, just because it dries really, really quickly. So I need to work quite fast. Make sure I've got it right to the edges. There we go. That will do, I think. And then I want my moon, I think, something like that. And I'm going to grab this piece of um, deli paper just so that I can really smooth it smooth it down without getting glue all over my background and I'm going to go and wash my fingers this isn't like super glue but um, it is very very strong so there we go let me just make sure that I've really got that pressed firmly on the edges and then go and wash my hands. I want my birds to go something like that and I'm going to stick them down with some foam. Now, I want to cover up that heart there. Um, so I think I'm going to place them something, something like that. I want them on the edge. Um, but as I say, I just want to, that um, heart there was in the wrong place really. So yeah, they're gonna have to go there, something like that. So I'm going to add some of this dimensional foam. Let's do do this. Oh, really, really sticky. So I'm going to add that in a couple of places. And I'll do the same to the other one and glue those down. And then I need to work on my quote. And I might add something else to the, to the background as well. Here we are, so we've got that there. So I'm going to start off by adding this one um, first, just because I know where I want this one to, to go. So 
So they're like, like that. And we'll add Better if I stand up and, and do this. Yeah, I think there, like that. There we go. So those are glued down. And then I want to work on my um, my quote. Now I want to handwrite my quote, and my handwriting isn't very good. So I've drawn myself some guidelines just with um, a ruler and um, a fine pencil. So here goes. This is the scary part for me because um, I hate my handwriting. So I've dried my lettering with um, a heat tool and then I've rubbed it out with, um, with just a, a normal eraser. Um, you can still see some of the lines there. Let's see if I can get rid of those a little bit more. That should be fine. And then I'm going to cut this out. Um, oh gosh, I can always write it again, can't I? If, um... So I'm just going to cut these out. I'll do this off camera so that I can see what I'm doing and then we'll try and position it. I don't think I'm brave enough to write directly on my page. I cut out my quote. Um, I filled in the um, O, the um, um, and the B and the A in the end just because it looked more pleasing to my eye and I'm going to ink around the edges and, and glue this down. I think I'm happy with the positioning of that so I use some archival ink to ink around the edges and use my same Dovecraft glue to glue it down. I just think that page is so cute. <laughs> I just want to add um, some embossing powder to the edge of my page, some bright white and so I've got my Versamark embossing ink and I'm just going to rub it on the edge of the page like, like this. Let's do the top part first. I'll do it one part at a time. And then give it a good shake. Let's add this to the edge. I've got a fresh piece of paper to catch all the excess. I haven't got much of my bright white left. See if I've got enough to go across the bottom. I think I should just about be able to do it. There we go. And then tap off the excess. I think I'd like it probably a bit thicker than that, but let me just heat set um, this. Now I can tell already that I want a slightly thicker, thicker border. So what I am going to do is grab um, a sponge and do it that Try way. Again, I've put some um, embossing ink on a makeup sponge this time. And I'm just going to add a much thicker layer around the edge of my page, like, like this. And pour on the embossing powder. And 
There we are, tip off the excess and that's better, I can see already. So I'm going to heat set that and carry on all the way around. I think this page is, is just so cute, I just love it. Um, I'm really pleased with my border. I've added um, a few more hearts as well. I don't know whether you can um, tell. I just felt that all the hearts were just facing in one direction. So I've added a few um, just in the opposite direction just to give it um, a bit more dimension. And the only other thing I want to do to this page is add some black embossing powder to the beak. But I've got to be careful because I don't want to melt um, my googly eyes. So I'm going to use, in fact I think I'll use this end, uh, my Versamark pen and I'm just going to add some embossing ink to the centre of the beaks and I'll add the embossing powder and then I'm going to have to add some kind of guard so that uh, cardboard guard, I think I shall do something like that. Um, so that I don't end up burning, as I say, and melting uh, my googly eyes. So bring back my piece of paper, in fact, let me just um, bend that one in the opposite direction. Let's add some more black. What have I done with the black? Here it is. There we go. Drop that off. I've got my paintbrush here so that I can get rid of any excess that um, I don't want. Sometimes it just sticks in places that you don't want it to, um, to be and if you just use a fine paintbrush like I'm doing here, um, it gets rid of any of the unwanted bits that you don't want and thwack it. I love that word, thwack. Th give it a good thwack on the back. So let me just um, put this back in the tub. And then let me just show you how I am going to guard my googly eyes. I hope this works and I hope I don't ruin it. Um, otherwise I'm going to have to completely start again. So I'm just going to hold that paper guard there, grab my heat tool. Yeah, we're okay. And I think that's pretty much it. So that's given um, my beaks just a, a little bit of shine. And I just love that. I think that page is so cute. So I'm going to glue this into my journal. And then as soon as I've done that, I'll be back. So here's my page glued into my journal. I just think this looks so cute. I'm very, very happy with it. Now, the temptation, because the background was already done, and so it felt as if I wasn't doing as much work as usual for a journal page, um, it's just like, really easy to, to overdo it if, if you're not careful. I kept thinking oh I need to do something something else and you know when I took a step back I thought no you don't Nina because it's it's already done it's already done um, let me show you when this background was was created here we go let me just um, bring this one here so this was the inches page and this was the first time that I'd used the black soot in a background and I just loved it and then I liked it so much I decided to use the black again for my Halloween page um, but you can see here um, that I decided to scrap this one and do another one and I added some spice marmalade by the looks of things and purple just to try and tie in um, the pieces that I used for my focal image and I just want to show you one other thing as well this is another page where I used quirky birds as well I just love that page that was one of my favorite ones so I shall leave the link to the inches page in the description box below for anybody who wants to know how the background was created it was really really easy to do so I hope you like that as always I would really appreciate a thumbs up because it just lets YouTube know that you like what I'm I'm doing and let me know what you think in the comments below um, and so I look forward to seeing how everyone else decides to interpret this prompt I'll leave the link to the Facebook group um, in the description box um, below as well for anybody who'd like to join in with um, our monthly prompts. The group's a, a, a lot of fun. There's a huge amount of inspiration in, in our group. So, you know, feel free to come and come and join us. Anyway, I shall um, leave you all to it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. <music>